It's mean, it's lean, it's a green cheapo machine. The new multimeter from b -Scythe that's got all the other ones green with envy. Why is that? Well, because it does a lot of really different things. Stay tuned and you'll see what I mean. All new from B-Side, the S30, a smart multimeter with infrared temperature measurement amongst other really cool features. Yes, this is one really unique DMM that came out uh, not long ago. Comes in a couple of different colors, green and red. Today we're looking at that oh so awesome green. I like Shakes it. with a little quality certificate from the Shenzhen Ammeter Company Limited. No date on there, but hey, it's new. Also comes with the ever important L mini screwdriver and a pretty decent instruction manual. A really nice typeset, good font, and has all of the particulars you need. Now this meter has a lot of unique functionality, so you're gonna wanna keep this handy because yeah, you're definitely gonna be referring to this down the road. Also comes with these huge test leads. I mean, these things are ginormous. They have a CE rating 10 amp, and uh, man, oh man, a Cat 3 1000 volts. I have not seen test leads that look quite like this before. I mean, they are massive, absolutely massive. Um, and I like that, I like that. Uh, so a very good grip, extremely pointy, and just awesome looking test leads. And another caveat to these test leads is they are silicone. Yes, not PVC, no, these are really soft, supple, really smooth silicone. And look at those ends. They just get into that. Oh, so nicely. Look at that, man, those are fitting like a glove. So kudos B-Side for giving us some quality stuff here. And believe it or not, this has a built-in rechargeable 1100 milliamp, 3.7 volt lithium battery. Plus, plus it supports an additional two AAA batteries. Oh man, and the cool thing is, the way the logic is done is once that lithium uh, dies, uh, then the standard alkalines will take over. And once the alkalines are no more, then you're gonna get a low battery warning. So, oh man, the logic is there. Um, that is an awesome feature. And check out that screen. Oh man, beautiful. Might be flickering a bit because of the uh, camera, but uh, in person, there is no flicker whatsoever. Smooth, color LCD, 10,000 count display, beauty. And yes, check that out, infrared thermometer included with the meter, oh man. Another really cool feature with this meter is the fact that it's not just smart, it also has your standard auto mode um, for, you know, just that everyday stuff. So you can either be in smart mode, let the meter think for you, or you can choose the manual override, beauty. Speaking of beauty, look at that. Also comes with a nice hard case. Doesn't have the logo on it. That would have been a really nice little uh, touch, but what a great case. Gonna keep that B-Side S30 safe and sound. And believe it or not, it looks like it's molded, right? Doesn't it look like it's all one? But this actually does come off. It does come off. We'll take it off in a little bit, but uh, nice boot. Um, very smooth, tactile. It might be a little bit too smooth. Might be a little bit slippery um, if your hands are a little greasy, but uh, hey, it's got a nice holster and that is definitely a good thing. Generally speaking, on a really nice looking footprint, uh, everything is accessible just by the uh, click of a button. And we're gonna go through those little buttons in just a minute, but man, oh man, very nice. On the back of the meter here, made in China, Cat 3, 600 volt. Uh, very that is sweet. Now it doesn't have a tilt stand or a magnet or any sort of, a, you know, holding clasp. So you're gonna be relegated to leaving it flat on the ground. Uh. This week's shout out goes to Columbia! Hey Chimba! I love you chicken! Thanks for watching. Discreetly on the bottom side here, we have our infrared button. Yes, that will enable the infrared temperature monitor. Beside that, we have our flashlight backlight. Over here, believe it or not, we have a high voltage diode mode. And we'll get more into that in a second. Finally, we have our select button. 
Located on the far left, we have our infrared sensor. So uh, make sure you don't be staring at that when you enable infrared thermometer because you just might go blind. <clears throat> here we have our flashlight. NCV is located over here. And finally, this is obviously our power on off button. And finally, the bottom of the meter here, we have our positive input. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And finally, on the far right, we have our input for the low current up to 600 milliamps. And on the far right here, take a little peeky. That is where those two alkaline AAA batteries go as a backup to the lithium rechargeable. Cool. To put in those two alkaline batteries, just unscrew the top like so. There goes your protector and it tells you right here how to put the batteries in. I'm using these amazing Xtar rechargeable lithium ion batteries. These are awesome. Gonna have a full review on those soon. Put those two batteries in like so and simply put the top back on and you might want to use the screwdriver again just to make sure it's in there just like so and there you go. So you now have a standard uh, chargeable backup as well as a full-fledged two AAA battery backup. Man that is so neat having that redundancy. Gotta love it. So let's turn that meter on hold down the button for power button for two seconds and away you go look at that nice big full color lcd screen and we have our auto shutdown which is currently disabled you can tell right there here we are in auto mode and we have our temperature at the bottom 22.4 degrees celsius next up we're looking at diodes now this has a really unique diode mode you don't see this every day on a multimeter um it has a low voltage diode mode which is just your basic uh diode uh, test and I think that outputs something around two volts we'll soon find out high voltage diode mode has an open circuit voltage of get this 15 volts and uh, the test current I believe is around 1 milliamp so uh, up to 15 volts to test those diodes man oh man okay let's start off with um, regular diode mode right now and we have forward voltage drop for that red LED and nothing for the other ones they are all lit though so five out of five but only one out of five in terms of giving us that forward voltage indicator that is regular voltage uh sorry regular diode mode and there you are the upward voltage in diode mode on standard diode mode is 2.5 volts by the way zoe zt702s check out the review first five star multimeter on the channel Okay, now we're gonna go to the super diode mode here on the side. And you can see there we are now in our full-fledged super diode mode. Man, here we go. That red LED, forward voltage drop, green lit forward voltage drop, that yellow lit forward voltage drop, the white, or let's call it the unicorn. Look at that going all, all over the place. And the white and the blue. So there you go, five out of five. And of course, standard diodes, yeah, no worries here. So, uh, you know, super handy dandy, and man, oh man, what Not can I say? Not too many multimeters have that super diode mode. Unity does with their UT89XD, and uh, I think there's one or two others, but it's definitely a rare breed. And a picture's worth a thousand words. Point seven volts, almost 16 volts output voltage in that super diode mode. Awesome. All is well in DC accuracy land. 5.000 is what we want. 4.994 is what we get. And this has a plus or minus three counts, uh, plus 0.8%. So it is in spec. In case you're wondering, the input impedance on the S30 is 900K. And that's right, that's the 117C full review coming on the end of the week. Alrighty, we're in continuity now. Here we go. Three, two, one, stock default test leads. Oh yeah, it is latched, loud, but it's slow. It takes about a half a second before it clicks in. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Definitely faster. Still some delay though, latching, but it is an improvement. Seventy-six point one decibels, maximum output volume. Right now we're in milliamp mode, but unfortunately uh, it's a no can do. Maybe we have a burnt out fuse. 
uh, on the milliamp side we'll have to check but as it stands uh yeah we should be getting around 200 milliamps right now and we're getting nada got that high current input uh, current tester here and let's just see if we're gonna get an output on that as well should be getting 100 milliamps and once again we're getting nothing so hopefully it's just a blown fuse ah now we're going to look at that infrared thermometer mode something pretty unique to a multimeter uh, this is found on the b-side s30 by simply hitting that far right button here at the bottom and there's our thermometer signifier and let's go this is a uh, power supply dc uh, power supply i'm working on uh, i'm going to test both the transformer and those heat sinks attached to and let's just see how it is in terms of temperature start off with that transformer and we're coming in at 30 degrees 31 actually for the transformer over to the heat sink and about the same 31 degrees maybe 30.8 a little bit less so hovering around 31 degrees for both of those components now i'm going to compare this to a fluke uh 62 max plus ir thermometer this is a pretty heavy duty one um let's try it out so this has a uh double whammy in the sense of two uh, infrared displays on it so 24 degrees as opposed to 31 for the heat sink and if we try that uh, transformer 24 degrees again as opposed to 31 so while well, quite a discrepancy here between uh, the B side and the fluke by about six seven degrees so hmm interesting and in smart mode right now sitting at 120 volts ac and we have that dual reading with the 60 hertz down at the bottom gotta love it once again in smart mode so we're just in auto mode don't have to actually select ac volts and bada boom bada bing now if you wanted to you certainly can go into ac volt mode So you can see there's a few steps to take to get there but once again it does eventually get there so manual mode manual mode 120.6 volts ac coming up next saturday august 26th you've got it the unity giveaway oh man it's going to be fun giving away at least one unity multimeter so if you're feeling lucky don't be shy don't let that, that unity walk on by it's going to be fun in resistance mode right now stock default test leads look at that we have no resistance on those test leads it's always a good thing sitting at 100k right now with our precision tester coming in at 99.94k and actually let's do the flipper rooney look at that 99.94k that is the true Sweet reading spot on next one should be 10.00k and guess what spot on don't make me a liar just said 10.00 thank you now let's look at range speed while in auto mode one mega ohm right now go up to three mega ohm Ooh, there we are six mega ohm wow so we have about a two second delay there 10 mega ohm there we go so yeah there is a bit of delay that's for sure 100k Let's try 300k 600k and finally one mega ohm that wasn't bad 10k 30k 60k and 100 yeah so not too shabby Finally, we're looking at NCV non-contact voltage. Right now I have this plugged into a, the wall. So 120 volts AC coming up, but look at that, nothing. Not a pinata. Oh my goodness, that is really bad. Why, why? Ah. And once again, even with a standard light switch here, we're getting absolutely nothing from the B side in terms of a hit for any sort of voltage indicator here. Oh Last man. But not least, I've got the high mains here. And finally, we're getting something. Oh man, you really gotta dig for it. Ah, no good. All things considered, the fact this has a replacement 600 milliamp fuse shouldn't be such a pain in the arse to get apart. Why don't we have easy access? Hey, better yet, why not a poly fuse so it's self resetting and we don't even have to open up the bloody back? Anyway, go figure, eh? So, it takes a while but you got to slowly pry and eventually and I say eventually 
<sighs> oh my god, it's gotta come off. It's gotta come off. <sighs> So glad it has a replaceable fuse. All right. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost, there we go. Ah. So before I do anything, I want to make sure that this fuse is indeed dead. And it is. So that's why we couldn't get any reading in the low current. I didn't blow it. I swear to God, I didn't blow it. I didn't try anything. I just put it on milliamp. Uh, when was that 200 so shipped with a bad fuse kind of sucks but hey uh, we'll replace that looks like it's standard 5 by 20 ceramic so it shouldn't be such a big deal to find another one let's start with the bottom shall we those input jacks soldered on there uh, really well nice big blobs of solder um one tiny ptc here on the voltage side that looks to be about it for input protection so not a lot going on in that department i don't even see a diode clamp um anyway Here's the uh, battery well for those two AAA batteries that uh, act as a redundant energy source for the built-in rechargeable lithium. So that's uh, kind of cool. In fact, if I press that power button, you can see that uh, lithium battery built-in one taking over. Oh my goodness, I just turned it on. Not a good thing. Okay, turn it off. Over here at the top is part of the thermometer itself, this little module here. Now, without this attached, I've actually got it in thermometer mode right now. If we actually remove this, you can see our thermometer goes to OL. So it's part of the temperature sensing portion of the IR. Cool. I'm gonna lift this off now. And oh yeah, there we go. All right, so. Um, well, in terms of input protection, at least, nothing else going on on this side. Um, however, there is that uh, lithium battery right here. Ah! And uh, what do we got here? 4.07 watt hours, 3.7 volt, 1100 milliamp hours. So there you have it. Small, but rechargeable. And speaking of rechargeable, there is the USB-C in for charging that is accessible through this plate here, which has a uh, one Phillips screw as well threaded. Funny thing though, why cover your uh, rechargeable slot? I don't understand it to be quite honest. That should just be out in the open somewhere, maybe a plastic overlay, but to have to use a, a screwdriver to get to the charging port, a little weird. Now I've turned the unit back on just so you can see that uh, laser LED so there it is looks a bit like a bullet doesn't it um, I thought first I thought it was the flashlight but no it is the laser so it's tucked in there like so and oh man don't look at that whatever you do don't look at those lasers um, yeah so there it is plugged in via that uh, interface over here on the PCB and by the way in terms of NCV itself I don't see any filament or any protrusion nothing that would indicate anything is being utilized here externally for some sort of a uh, non-contact voltage uh, antenna nothing mm. anyway there you have it nice and clean no flux it is a definitely a clean uh, well laid out PCB um, yeah all right let's put it back together come back with my closing thoughts and wouldn't you know what? I replaced that ceramic fuse with a resettable poly fuse like that. And look at that, man. 200 milliamp, 196.6 beauty. And no having to replace the cover. Ugh. Holy shnikes! Yeah, that's what I said when I first saw this multimeter. The abundance of features was absolutely incredible. But, and there is a but unfortunately, it's not all great. Definitely love that smart slash manual override makes a lot of sense. Hey, sometimes you just need a quick measurement. Other times you want to get down and dirty. This way you have a choice. And that high voltage dial mode, man, that thing is awesome. Definitely useful and it will really come in handy. And let's not forget about that redundant power. You've got those two AAA backups for the built-in rechargeable lithium ion. Makes sense. However, this is a meter that boasts a lot of features and some of them are just plain useless. Like that NCV, for example, completely and utterly useless. 
Even the infrared mode, it is a really nice gimmick. And in this case, it really is because in terms of measurements, and I did a lot of them, it was always off by at least six to seven degrees, sometimes as much as 10 to 12. The fact like always having to lay my meter down flat, I do prefer something that has at least a magnet to give me some options. In this case, eh -eh, can't do it. And why the heck they're hiding that USB-C charging port makes no sense. Now there's a lot of things that just drive me crazy about this meter and it's too bad because there's a lot of things I also love. But at the end of the day, the good and the bad, <clears throat> it's a hard choice, a hard call. I'm giving the B-side S30 a dismal two out of five stars. Yeah, they tried a lot and you know, kudos to B-side, he did some really great things. But this one is still not ready for prime time just yet. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.